This video has been brought to you by Meso CNC Controllers. Well, it's been some time since I worked on any of the Johnny Lightning Greatest Generation vehicles. Many of you have asked for the Sherman Tank to be next, and I'm not one to disappoint. I have to say that this is a really cool model. The tank treads are real in that they are a separate part and not molded to the tracks like you see too often today. That being said, I can't say that they are a working set as I'm pretty sure you would break them if you pushed the tank to get it to roll. As far as details go, it's a very detailed tank for a 164 scale model. The turret will turn 360 degrees just like the machine gun mounted on top of it. The main gun will raise and lower. I think the front mounted machine gun will also move up and down though mine seems pretty tight and I didn't want to mess it up or break it. All the rest of the details are molded into the casting. Removing the treads is pretty simple. In fact, it's keeping them on and in place that's a bit difficult for this casting. Now, I'm not a tank expert and I'm not familiar with all the technical lingo as far as its parts names go, but I will do my best. The main drive sprocket and the rear sprocket do move on this model, however the idler assemblies and rollers do not. This makes rolling the tank pretty much impossible. However, I don't think they planned on this casting actually rolling. There's no real reason to take this tank apart, but I thought it might be fun to see how it was constructed. After drilling out the post, the two halves just fell apart. I was a bit surprised to see how they attached the turret with the two posts. I have to wonder how they supported the casting when they flattened them on the orbital riveter. But other than that, there's no real surprises here. I got to wondering about the writing on the side of the tank. Looking up the number 3063084 brought up all the info on this famous tank. This is a replica of a real tank, the first tank to break through the German lines and into Bastogne. The packaging states that it's a M4A3, but doing some research online, it's actually an M4A3E2 jumbo assault tank. These tanks had extra armor on them and could take a beating. As such, they normally took point to draw out enemy fire. This tank made it into Bastogne and then was disabled several days later and abandoned. The Germans, after finding it, burned out the inside and left it. Years later, it was placed in an entrance to a base and then rediscovered. It was partially restored and then put in a museum. Working on the Jeep a couple months ago, I went a little overboard on the weathering, so this one I plan to dial it back just a little bit. The first thing I'll do is dry brush on some rust. Different paint and weathering powder manufacturers like Vallejo and AK Interactive produce rust colored paints to use for this purpose. Here I'm using one by Life Color. The trick to dry brushing is to get as much of the paint off the brush as you can. Then you can go over the item with the brush and any paint still on the brush will be deposited on the high details. A real tank will lose its paint from these high areas as the tank brushes up against objects like trees and such. These areas will rust up and that's what I'm trying to reproduce here. You can see here how effective dry brushing is, not to mention how simple. It works real well on high detail items like this tank. Next I'm going to come in with some Nuln Oil Wash by Citadel. This wash goes on thick and then gathers in the valleys and the corners of the details. When it dries it looks like grime and oil build up. Areas that the wash is really thin, like the high points, go almost transparent. So dry brushing gets the high details and the wash goes in the valleys. I'm sure you can see how this works. The tank when purchased was just a straight olive drab, but after these two simple steps, it will take on a whole new dimension as there's now dozens of shades created by using these two steps. The Battle of the Bulge took place during the winter of 1944. As such, most pictures you see show soldiers and vehicles covered in snow. I want to add snow to my tank, but first I should explain that anytime you do something like this, it really requires context. In other words, I really need a diorama with snow in it for people to think it's snow and not dirt and dust. To apply snow, I'll need to dip my brush in the white weathering powder and then dab it on the tank. You do not want to brush it on here. This will just make it look more like dust. Once I have built up a good layer, I'll spray on some testers matte clear coat and then repeat. It seems like I'm using a lot, but the clear coat both blows some away and causes it to go translucent, dulling down the effect. Hopefully when I get done it looks like snow, but if I'm careful it can also look like dust, which also looks okay when the tank is sitting by itself. Now it's time for the heavy grime. For this I'll use a dark black weathering powder and some dark green or brown paint. I'll mix it up slightly, but not completely. The paint acts as a binder and a glue for the powder. 
but not mixing the paint and the powder completely will get you more of a chunky consistency compared to a slurry. Once it's mixed the way I like, I will start shoving the brush into the undercarriage of the tank. When I want it to look more chunky, I'll place the brush in the powder and then apply it over the paint. I'll go back and forth using the paint as glue and then applying the powder on top. Once I have the mud applied and am happy with the results, I'll let the paint dry and then apply another layer of Tester's clear coat to set everything. Once the clear coat dries, I'll put the tank back together and put the treads back on. Hopefully you can see how these simple steps can transform a sort of bland looking item into something with much more dimension and character. I did think about painting the shovel and axe on this model, but everything I read said these items were painted to match the tank. Which makes sense, you don't want a shiny axe giving away your position. I wanted this video to be about simple weathering techniques, but I'm sure you can think about other details that could be added to this tank. If so, feel free to let me know below. If there's enough ideas and interest, I'll make another video adding your ideas to the tank. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.